So we've been having fun with squares and square roots, and we know that certain numbers can be rewritten differently but have the same value. For example, here we have square root of 16. You might say, well, Mr. Zonker, I know that the square root of 16 is equal to 4, and you'd be right. We've got square root of 16 and 4. They look different, but they have the same value. Let's go ahead and dissect what's actually going on here in this transition so we can simplify some square roots that are a little more complex. Let's start with the square root of 16 and break it into factors. We know 16 is equivalent to 4 times 4, and you might have heard this called a factor tree before, just breaking this number into factors. Now, when we have this 4 times 4, that would give us the square root of 4 squared, right? 4 times 4 is 4 squared. Now, since we have a square root and a square, since those are opposites, our output, the number that's gonna we're going to be left with is just 4, which is what we've done before. The key difference here, the point that I want you to get out from this is, when taking squares roots, look for pairs in the factor tree. Just like this pair of fours we found here. These can be simplified out. So instead of rewriting as four squared, then canceling the square root in the square, once we have this pair, this pair number of four can be simplified out. And that's going to be your answer. Let's do some examples and you'll get the hang of it. Here we want to simplify the square root of 12. Let's start by breaking 12 into factors. I know that 4 times 3 will give me 12. Okay, now neither of these are a pair, so let's keep factoring numbers out. 3 is prime, so we can't break that down, but what about 4? We could break 4 into 2 times 2. Now I actually do have a pair here, a pair of 2's. Again, my 3 has no partner, so he's left all alone inside the square root. We can simplify this 2 out, since we have a pair, that'd be like 2 squared, or the square root of 4, so we can take out, for our answer, a 2. And what's going to be left inside the square root is every number that does not have a pair. In this case, that would be the square root of 3. So we've simplified the square root of 12 to be 2 square root of 3. Here we have the square root of 36. Now you might be telling yourself, well, I know that's just 6, and you'd be right. But let's say you didn't know that this was a perfect square, you didn't know that this was 6, and you wanted to break it into factors. Let's say you chose 3 times 12. From here, we could break this 12 down further. That would be 3 times 4. And we could break this 4 down further. That would be 2 times 2. Let's find our pairs. I've got a pair of 3's, and I've got a pair of 2's, so I can simplify those pairs out. That will give me 3, and whenever you have more than one pair that you're taking out, it's just going to be multiplication. So that would be 3 times 2, and then since there's nothing left that's not accounted for, there's nothing left inside our square root. So our answer would just be 3 times 2, which was 6, which matches up with what we know the square root of 36 is. Let's try the square root of 42. This can be broken into 7 times 6. 6 can be broken into 3 times 2. All right, nothing else to break down. Let's look for our pairs. Well, 7 has no pair, 3 has no pair, and 2 has no pair. So we can't simplify anything out. Unless you have a pair or something times itself, the square root's not going to simplify it, so everything inside is just going to be left under the square root. So what you do when you have multiple things left that are not simplified out is, all you do is you have to re-multiply them. So in this case, we'd have 7 times 3 times 2, or square root of 7 times 3 times 2, which, if we multiplied that out, we'd get 7 times 3 is 21 times 2, is 42, and our simplified answer is square root of 42, back where we started. Because nothing could be simplified out, we have to re-multiply all these to give us back to square root of 42. All right, another important thing here I want you to write down is if you start with a number outside of your square root, 
this will multiply to anything that you simplify out. For example, here we have 5 square root of 48. This 5 is outside the square root, but let's proceed like normal focusing on this square root. So break this 48 down into factors. We could do 6 times 8. We could break 6 down into 3 times 2. 8 down could be 4 times 2, and 4 we can do 2 times 2. So we've got quite a few factors here, but again, same thing, let's just look for pairs. Here I see a pair of 2's, whoop. I see another pair of 2's right here, whoop. And for my 3 here, there is no pair, so I cannot simplify that out. So, in bringing these out here, I'm still going to have my 5 that started outside of the square root, so I'm going to leave that. I can take out 1, 2, so I'm going to multiply by 2 out here. And I could take out another 2, so I'll multiply that right here. And I'm going to be left inside the square root with my 3 since there was no pair. So I'll put the square root of 3. Now if I want to simplify that, I have 5 times 2 is 10, times 2 is 20. I'm going to have 20, and inside my square root, there's just a 3 by itself. So 20 square root of 3, and there you go.